wind and water. It's the flow of energies uh, across the landscape. And so all of these uh, ologies uh, boil down to health. And it's the health of your physical body, the health of your mental and emotional <coughs> bodies, and the health of your business or your living space.
successful at whatever you're doing in the way of healing will come up, uh, I would say, close to 100 times. The results will be 100 times faster, more efficient, and take less time. Any questions out there on that? My question about the... Boxes are, are really the, the worst. Uh, I, I personal experience with that. Uh, in that close to killing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, over a three year period, I absorbed this energy from a, a bad transformer. And eventually the thing was struck by lightning. And I mean, it just blew it all over the block. But at the time, I wasn't as cognizant of what I know now. But around that pole, around that transformer pole, the ant hills were so thick that when you walked on the ground, you'd sink in your ankles. Mm -hmm. The ground is that soft, there's so many ants. So the ants are a very identifying characteristic. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a lot of ants, uh, you have a fairly high eupathic stress level in the area. Uh, the, Big ant hills we find out here in the west, out in the prairie country, the Texas red harvest ants, always on geopathic stress intersections, always. Termite uh, hills in Australia and Africa are on the intersections of geopathic stress lines. 100% every time. Hmm. Uh, the hill where I live is we call it the ant hill because. It's when it gets really hot, the whole hill comes alive with ants. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I have discovered that I've probably been sleeping on these lines myself. Is when you when you um, are can you detect? I have a I have a um, compass, and where I think the lines are, the compass goes off. It, would that be any? Um, if that goes off on the building. swings like. Uh, I've noticed some variations in compasses uh, working with this. Usually what I use a compass for is just, you know, the orient of the floor. Because when we're dealing with the Hartman grid, the only part we have to be concerned with is on the south and the west side of the house. Because that, that particular flow only comes from the south and west. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you the heart and grid except on those two sides. Because mm. when you when you point it towards the north, when you get to the specific part, which is probably the, the east and west lines, the, the needle just flaps like that. Mm. Yeah, so. I mean, I she called me over there and she said, come over here. <laughs> and I, I was like, okay, here we go. <laughs> That's one of Robin's things. So I took the compass <laughs> and... Um, I went from her two rooms and I walked. <coughs> and then we went outside and it did the same thing. And it's only a different correct, it's like a maybe six feet. And it's from point to point. Then we went to another window and did the same thing. She slept under these underneath these windows. Right, I slept under the first window and then I moved over to the and second place so and her, the same. And it pinpointed exactly where she rested her head. <coughs> And I said, Robin, <laughs> move your bed. <laughs> <laughs> and she moved it. Yeah, and I felt a lot better ever since. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that was based on just on the magnetics of the, um, mm -hmm. the magnetic north shifting. And it was only because I was trying to line my little pyramid up and I <laughs> put it on, the, on this place. And it would, I thought there was something wrong with the compass because it wouldn't work. <laughs> so I started moving along and discovered it. Yeah, but but there, that, that place is alive with ants, and that's really interesting. Mm. Yes. So you, you, you gave us a, a, a great illustration of how to neutralize, but you haven't shown us how to balance. Oh, okay. Uh, neutralizing the grid balances out the energy in the house. Well, it's the same. Yeah, same way. Yeah, yeah that, that's a broad term for balance. <laughs> so, a little bit of history here. Uh, the the energy balancing that I'm speaking of uh, is our topic for a month. Uh, 
that's what we call this pain relief working with the tools. And uh, so before you do that, neutralize the grid. That, that takes the stress off the environment, takes the stress off the person in the environment. Uh, first thing you want to do is your own personal homes. <coughs> you have tenants, uh, your rental home that you own. Uh, you may notice that uh, if you own a number of rentals, that uh, sometimes one place stays rented longer than another. Okay, the short term rental where the tenants move in a couple of months are gone. They move in a couple of months are gone. That's a high stress place. They, they get so confused, so stressed that they can't function at their job. Okay. They took the place because it was fairly reasonable and you're renting it for, for less money because you need to attract tenants to keep somebody in there to keep payments going. Well, if you have a high stress location, uh, your tenants are going to suffer from it and you're going to risk losing and have a high time, no difficulty renting it at all. A lot of people come to a place that, meh, I don't like it. They're sensitive to the energy. And we've even uh, had a <laughs> number of uh, homes that were put on the market. You know, 150 people come and look at it. You know, walk in the front door, look around, they're gone. After we neutralized the grid, they'd stay for a half an hour, 45 minutes an hour, and look at it a little very carefully. The house sold to the first person they visited after we neutralized the grid. Well, I have work to do. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've noticed like certain businesses in like in a certain building, they'll come and they'll go, and they'll they'll only be there three or four months, and then they're out of business again. Someone else <coughs> tries to do it, and you know I figure it's like something's wrong with that building, you know, just sick building. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that location doesn't attract people necessarily, but the only thing that would be attractive would be for the location or the price. Mm -hmm. So if a, an owner has difficulty keeping tenants in the building, uh, he needs to call somebody who knows geopathic stress and then a feng shui artist or a combination of the two and uh, balance the place out, saving megabucks. Uh, we're we're going to be offering service to uh, uh, corporate America. We've already done one large corporation in the Denver area and uh, I think they, have, they were scattered out in five buildings on this corporate campus and then they consolidated everything into a new world headquarters. And we had the opportunity to go in there and block all the zones prior to the building being finished and occupied. <coughs> but we had some very interesting results. Very interesting results just doing the, the scattered buildings. Uh, a lot of stuff came up and blew off, so to speak. A lot of emotional turmoil for about a week or two. Then it settled out. And I uh, do a little counseling. found that some of the people were attracted to a transformer of all things. That they could lean on it during the lunch hour. So anyway, we, we got the transformer handle to put a big ring around it. Which room do these paths move? For instance, if you do a space and once do you have to redo it after a certain period of time? Occasionally we'll find that a new zone will show up. I can't explain that. I don't know why that happens. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes and sense, but it will. 
Yeah, and once in a while. It, it's not a free I have an opportunity right now to put some blocks in a space that's just being built. And I was thinking about doing that. Good yeah. idea. Yeah. Good idea. Uh, we worked uh, in this geophantic work with all of the building <coughs> professions, I mean, from A to Z. I uh, even worked with uh, a couple of dairy farms uh, where their milk production had been going down steadily. Knock out the geophantic zones, correct a couple of electrical faults in the building to reduce that stress level. And health production can up dramatically, very dramatically. Uh, Joe talked to some realtors, property managers, uh, personnel managers would be particularly interested. Uh, we found in several cases where we did you know, medium sized businesses and warehouses that the interpersonal relationships with the staff just improved dramatically. All the bickering went away and uh, better cooperation, less fewer misunderstood orders. How about accidents? Accident rates would do that. Yeah. So, you know, anytime you take stress off, your overall health, used in the broadest terms, is going to improve. Uh, we've had several businesses that have gone from a, a plateau, you know, kind of bumping their butt, so to speak. Uh, they were doing okay, but not great. And after the geopathic stress was relieved, you know, dramatic upturn in the flow of business and the bottom line. Uh, one fellow last year had a contract that had been hanging fire for a year. $2 million dollar contract. And uh, I, I got his wife to do an on camera interview about exactly what happened. And God, she's a sweetheart. But uh, she, and she tells the story so well, I, I wish I had that copy here now so you could see it live. But uh, she is uh, a beautiful young blonde lady and very spiritually aware, a very uptown person. And uh, she told me how her husband's business took off after we did the geopathic test there. And uh, the, the contract had been hung up in Washington for months and months and months. Got finalized and found, literally, they found it on the shelf in Washington, D.C. after we neutralized the grid there in, in Boulder. Mm -hmm. And then they added more to it. They wanted to do more research. So here's a, an ongoing $2 million defense contract. A week later, another million dollar contract came in. A week after that, another big contract came in. Now he's got so much business and doing so well, he's overworking himself. <laughs> and he's getting ready to sell the business at its high peak where it's really being successful. So he can sell out for a really good figure and still have as much of the business as he wants. So that was, that was one of our really big successes. So you just we've seen others do the same. They'll go from, say, 100000 a year to $2 million a year. <clears throat> so you're saying you did this work in Boulder and it affected that the paperwork and stuff in Washington, yeah. D.C.? Okay, so what things hung up. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to kind of get it straight in my mind. I'm going to do it. The personal work on the personal house or whatever, or the business. Yeah, uh, it would affect whatever goes out is connected to that business? Yeah. Is that what you should It, it affects the, the overall grid, the hologram, if you will. Uh -huh. And you can view it in those terms. Uh, the uh, 
business owner in question there was uh, very creative guy. He, he dropped out of high school and started his business career. He's been extremely successful. He's just a genius. You know, education would have slowed him down a lot. So, uh, anyway, he, he was complaining that he couldn't be creative. He was sitting in that corner of his office and his creativity just began to fall off. He couldn't focus, he couldn't think, and uh, things were stuck. So after he knocked out the geopathics, then all of a sudden, within a day, his creativity and his energy level came up and he brightened up and uh, the communication lines opened. Now these were on the etheric communication mm -hmm. lines. Okay. So if his mind is in trouble, the guy that he's been talking to in Washington all of a sudden says, well, there's no trouble out there. So he kind of remembered the contract and that they needed this done. Got the job done, so on and so on. But this, this is called in physics, this is action at a distance. Okay, this is supposedly not possible, but some of the scientists or theoreticians are saying, well, you can do that, but we don't understand it exactly. Well, now we have chaos theory, we have the holographic theories, and we're beginning to perceive in our own lives the effects of us doing something in California affecting it in Washington, D.C. But there is a direct link between all of us, and this is starting to prove those links. That study that they did on the crossword puzzle from in England. I'm not aware of it. The, um, they experimented with in the London Times by releasing a puzzle that they had released a day or two early in London, withholding it in, a, in the northern part of England, and then they timed the solution to the puzzle. People doing the puzzle, and those people that the puzzle was released to two days later, could solve it in half the time. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Hunter's monkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, since we have started doing the work along the front range in Denver from Colorado Springs up north to Fort Collins, uh, we've seen, one, a tremendous growth in that area. People are moving in by the thousands. I mean, the growth is phenomenal. And we've seen the level of optimism in that area increase dramatically. A tremendous increase in optimism. <coughs> Business is just going gung ho there. Uh, you didn't look like California. <laughs> That there's been a slow train in that direction for you know, 50 years. But uh, currently the, the train is accelerating. And the number of houses being built and the enthusiasm and the creativity has really come up dramatically. And I'm estimating that between what Bill and I have done people who trained in that area, that's where we train most people. It's right there along that front range, probably 500 in that area. <coughs> and they have trained people. So this, as we figured out the, the downline numbers, uh, we're estimating there's been at least 120,000 homes that had the geopathic work done in that Denver or Collins Corridor. And within two years, we could see the shift begin you know, as the numbers increased. And the, the changes in people and the excitement and the activity and the creativity and the better communications, uh, the improvement in interpersonal communications was just really dramatic. Have you, by any chance, trained anybody in New York? I saw, I, I, the reason I'm asking, I saw um, 
some news show on television about how they're going, everyone's going, what's up with New York? Like crime is down and people are being nice to each other and, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not pushing each other on the okay, side what's, of what's happened there is that we have probably a half a dozen harmonizers and tapes in, in New York. And that started uh, three years ago. <laughs> they were interviewing, like, this um, this man that was a head of the emergency room in one of the hospitals and said, he was saying, like, three, three or four years ago, yeah. people would come in all the time with gunshot wounds, you know, dying yeah. all the place. It's like a war zone, and now... Oh, it's yeah. It you hardly see. It. Yeah. And everybody, they thought it was like the new governor or something. His new policy. Yeah, right. You know. Well, <laughs> uh, there's there's a, a line in Lao's uh, uh, book. Dow teaching. Dow teaching. Uh, the line in there says that uh, the sage does his work in secret. Mm -hmm. talk about it. But he does the work and he gets done and doesn't take credit for it. Well, I'm going to take credit for it. <laughs> so I'm not a sage. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the effects we've seen in Denver, crime rate in Denver is down 50% in the last three years. And that's a combination of uh, the geopathic work we've done and the major zones that we suppressed. Uh, these major zones that we've worked on there in Denver have center lines 300 feet wide. Mm -hmm. you're, you can't block the visual <laughs> set of rocks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That required the development of what we call the R2 units. And uh, those placed outside, way outside the city limits. Uh, and we quieted that whole uh, area down, modified the grid. Your dousing log will stay wide open for 300 yards? No. Uh, on those, I, I can't even find those for 1,000 yards. Uh, we had to use a clairvoyant. We could see those energies. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my, my youngest son is mm -hmm. uh, youngest son, a great big guy like this. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. is the clairvoyant. And we had you know, other indications from clairvoyants that there was something really bad going on. They couldn't, well, they could roughly identify it, but they didn't have the same accuracy as they and so we took a drive around Denver one day, and let's see, that was in February. Mm -hmm. uh, February of 91, I believe. Mm -hmm. And we located those zones, and we did block one. We could block one with a, a ring technique. We used a you know, big heavy cable. I mean, a huge ring. Uh, it was only 70 feet across. So we, we had enough scrap cable in the back of the car right to do it. But that particular zone controlled the level of optimism in the city. And the control point is what is known as the cryogenics lab at the Martin Marietta plant there in Denver. And the zone came out of that building, intersected the natural zone, and ran up uh, north south, made a right angle turn, and crossed the city. Made a right angle turn? They made a right angle turn? Yeah. Now, this is quite an unusual circumstance. Uh, and I, I believe it's a deliberate man made system. Or it could be purely accidental. Yeah. So you put a ring on a round ring on the ground flat, and, and that just turned around. one edge just like you bend your taco, mm -hmm. and that broke. I broke that field and caused it to go totally underground. Just wiped it out. And uh, that well, that 
zone ran almost 40 miles across the city there. And it intersected it right from the north end of town. And what we knew to be a very heavily geopathic and stressed area, and since we blocked it, uh, the crime rate and the health, crime rate's going down and the uh, health rate is going up in that area. And there were, I believe there were two major hospitals sitting in that, what was a very bad geopathic zone. And uh, I think there were over 1,115 hospitals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> after that. So how, how wide an area will one of those um, little, do you think, is your rods cover? Uh, well, you're just blocking that one inch center line. Just one inch, is that as much as that will do? Hmm? That's as wide as that would do, that would block. What do you need to block something wider than the one inch? Uh, you probably won't find those. They're, they're not very common. Oh, you probably won't find those. Unless you get a clairvoyant that spots it. Mm -hmm. if and if you do get a clairvoyant that living in that area, get out. <laughs> or block it. Well, you can get out. Of currently, <laughs> we don't. You can get out of Oakland. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope, to, I hope to do a workshop up there this, this fall. I hope you do too. Uh, I'd like to, like to do that. I've got a brother living there in Concord. In Concord? I haven't seen him in a couple of years. I kind of like to see what you old hippie's doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd probably like to see you too. What you doing? Well, that scared the socks off. <laughs> really spooky. Believe me. <laughs> really spooky. But I took the coil and reduced the pain in his lower back for the first time in years and years. It totally changed his personality. Within three days, he was completely different. One of the most dramatic things I've ever seen in my life. What was this symptom? I mean, was he like a thrive or what? Just low back pain. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was an entity. <laughs> different, completely different personalities. Very, very negative. And he's been negative all his life. He had that pain most of the time. And you did it with the car? Yeah, it was uh, about 20 minutes. Oh, what size of the car? Just a regular one? Okay, so we've been talking about the grid. Stretched a fish net on a basketball, that's about what it would look like. That's a broad concept, or you could call this the uh, earth grid, and imagine that our longitude and latitude lines would indicate <coughs> a uh, uh, grid pattern. And this, these would be the major grid lines, I mean, these are the big ones. And in your workbook, There's a uh, illustration of the Earth. Uh, oh. <laughs> That's out of the gravity uh, handbook. And it represents some of the key points. Literally, CHI key points or KY points. Uh, we would like to address eventually. We did address the one uh, in their visa, uh, which is basically the zero, zero, zero uh, point on this grid. So we get, you know, get home, dead center, master, acupuncture point, and uh, we'll see what happens. We're still watching pretty carefully. Uh, if we say this is a major grid system, Say this is Upland, Colorado, and we're down to this size. And then we say that we've got all the road system, the uh, 
electric distribution system, uh, the county lines, the various political subdivisions, another kind of grid. And we've all seen maps, we have an idea of that. We go off here to uh, spot one small area and call it your house. And we'll get to this uh, concept of uh, a very clean space, a clean bubble. Take this circle and make it three dimensional. And we'll have a, a clean bubble with no grid. Okay. So that's what we're that's what we're headed for. And what I'd like to show here is the uh, a very crude representation of what we're talking about here. The grid lines are vertical planes. I, I wish we had a better way to illustrate that. But the Hartman grid has a width this way. About it's about eight inches. And the center line is only an inch wide. The clairvoyants who see these uh, see them from 60 to 600 feet uh, above ground level. Uh, some areas are very high, the grass will be higher or maybe a little wider. And just prior to an earthquake, anywhere on the planet, anywhere on the planet, this line will extend its thickness and probably its height uh, will extend its thickness out to about 30 inches. 30? 30, 30, 30 inches, yeah. That's prior to an earthquake. Yeah, just prior to the earthquake now. Is that the center line that goes up? No, just, just the whole zone. Yeah, it goes from 8 inches wide out to about 30 inches. Mm -hmm. That'll happen uh, three days before the quake and start uh, increasing the strength. Mm -hmm. That's why some people are highly affected by earthquakes. Mm -hmm. We have the earthquake sensors. Mm -hmm. And they'll get real accurate on their predictions. Mm -hmm. The uh, so called geopathic zone. Usually a little bit more aggressive, it's a little stronger. It has a uh, uh, thicker zone. Uh, they can be a couple of three feet normally. Mm -hmm. Find them up to a, a couple of hundred feet. Uh, a zone of influence, the band on either side of the center line. But they'll still have only a one in center line. It's just how strongly they're vibrating or what the, the field tension is there. And we've <coughs> seen these points, uh, <coughs> we'll see them uh, minimum of 600 feet, and we've actually seen the disruption in certain cloud patterns of 30,000 feet over major fault zone. And it is quite visible. And, you know, there's a nice smooth plain clouds and there's about a mile wide stretch that's all churned up and has a different pattern. So when an airplane goes through that, what happens? Uh, nothing much. Uh, you'll know that you, you take a thousand rods on the plane and you won't find these very often at, at 30,000 feet. There's not too many of them. But uh, you're flying along, you estimate you've traveled 20, 30, 50 miles. Rods open there. Oh, there's one. <laughs> Big fall zone. I've done that in the car, uh, locating the ley lines. Yeah, yeah. Which are I, uh, I have to, to put it to you an experience. Back in March, I flew from Oakland down to Orange, down to John Wayne. And uh, as we got over Catalina Island, maybe about a mile, mile south or so. All of a sudden, I was sitting there looking at the airplane going, what is that? And I could feel this energy. And I was just, and it lasted maybe about five, ten minutes. Really? We approached John Wayne Airport, and it just kind of smoothed out. 
on June 1st, I, um, I'm kind of linked up with the Earthlink mission. And on June 1st, I got an email for alignment of the fire ring. And the point that was putting out negative energy is 20 miles south of Canada. Wow. On Ju we flew in yesterday, and I thought, oh, we're just about near that area now. And I was just kind of, OK, let's see. And I thought, yes, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Um, where we live also up in the hills is the Hayward Fault. And so sometimes on the way home from our work, uh, we'll take a ride up on what they call Highway 13, which is fault line. Which is fault line. And there is a stretch of the hills up there. Um, I guess it's pretty wide. And um, I'll just sit there, and all of a sudden it's like, what is this? And it happens every single time. And then I can feel it fade out. And then we'll go maybe another mile, and it'll intensify again. And then <coughs> I was asking how, on those real wide lines, how could you get rid of them? Uh, other than leaving uh, open the, totally. <laughs> the best we can currently do is to <coughs> modify <coughs> the energy there. Uh, we can't eliminate it entirely. It would take a considerable bit of engineering to completely mm -hmm. eliminate those energies from <coughs> City region. Uh, ideally, we use ring technology uh, with some pretty heavy copper cable, uh, several thousand pounds of it. Uh, we build an earth bank across that area that goes up a hump and turn one edge up on that hump and then bury the whole cable uh, maybe a foot or two down. Is that on the fault line you're talking about? Uh, fault line or whatever we're Why locating in these major traffics. What are the effects of having the harmonizers on the fault line? We modify it. Yeah, we're, we're able to change it a little bit so it's not quite as bad. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've done in Denver. We put the R2 units on the, on the grid. Can you talk a little bit about what uh, you have noticed about earthquakes and their origin, what you've come across? Uh, that's probably tomorrow's topic, yeah. Bring that up for me again. But I, I think we can either reduce the effect of earthquakes uh, just by local action with the rings or eliminate them entirely. Uh, that, that was our research in do they cause the geopathic lines, or, or do or, or do the geopathic lines cause the earthquake falls? It is above, so below. Uh -huh. Okay. I tend to think it's from above. So, how do we get into this geopathic stress in the home? What's it look like? What happens? <coughs> Ideally, this is what we'd like to see. We'd like to see it free and clear of any, any problems. Unfortunately, we start with the Hartman grid, which is a fairly regular network, uh, about six and a half by eight feet. The uh, Hartman grid is, is regular. When you find it, it's extremely regular. Uh, occasionally, it'll be slightly skewed. In other words, the lines don't form right angles. And that's just a local phenomenon. Don't worry about it. If, if your rods want to follow the center line, it's not exactly north and south. Don't worry about it. It's just a local phenomenon. So the energy flows from the south this way and from the west. And that's the only thing you have to be concerned with with Hartman Grid. Located on the south side, west side, block it, you're done. You don't have to look for it on the other two sides of the house. Uh, 
notice the locations of some of these grid lines. In the bedrooms, the crossings on the bed, uh, the dining table, uh, here at the uh, entertainment center, uh, on the couch, uh, right through the john if you pass out on the john <laughs> sits at this end of the table and always gets something to bitch about. <laughs> <laughs> or mom sits at that end of the table and she goes ballistic as soon as she sits down and starts eating. Mm -hmm. You know, no comment before. I mean, everything's fine. It sits down at the table. Bingo. Mm -hmm. There she goes. There she goes. Okay. She blows. This, <laughs> this phenomenon to many people's attention that they feel very, very uncomfortable uh, in certain locations in home. Mm -hmm. Or a couple will notice that they only have arguments when they're in a specific location. Mm -hmm. One of them will start the argument, the other one can't figure out, what's wrong? What did I do? Wait a minute. I didn't do it. The argument is very one-sided and, and very, well, difficult or impossible to understand. First, <coughs> why they're being attacked. Okay. Because what happens in these geopathic stress zones, the person who's affected is seeing everything in reverse mirror. wonder where this crazy talk is coming from. You can't figure it out. It's from the geopathic stress. It, it acts like a, a burning mirror. Anything you say, anything the person sees from that point, it's reverse of the actual fact. This is the Hartman process. Hartman or geopathic or person, any of the generalized geopathic stress. Okay. I wanted to cover a few of those things here before I go into the rest of them. All of these geopathic stress phenomena occur no matter what name you give. It's basically the same phenomena occur. But to distinguish between them allows you to begin to think that other areas of your life, other phenomena, can be addressed in the same way. It took me a long time to figure that out. But uh, wherever there's a, uh, a stress in your cash flow, your communications, your uh, business affairs, anything like that, you can go to Dallas for that specific item. What's blocking communication? What's uh, blocking cash flow? What's interfering with business? Use the term blocking or interfering, doesn't matter. And locate those zones and neutralize them, divert them over the house, and think of that problem disappears out of your life. It's really simple. Very simple. <laughs> really simple. It's incredible. And I found. <coughs> Simple things like uh, uh, <coughs> well, just for instance, uh, communication. Jeez, uh, I haven't gotten a phone call in three weeks. Nobody's calling in. It was a sudden change. I have to. Oh, let's see. Communication. Okay, it must be a block. Something blocking communication. I grabbed the rods and went out to circle around. Found four or five lines that basically all crossed right where I did my telephone work. And I blocked them. And within 30 minutes, the phone started ringing. And it hasn't quit. <laughs> I'm, I'm blocked it. Could take those rocks out of a break. It was incredible. I, I mean, I was dumbfounded to discover that. I, I couldn't believe that. You know, there could be some specific thing that was blocking communication. Mm -hmm. 
and it's a cylinder. All right. I did the same thing for cash flow. I did the same thing for general business. Uh, sleep problems. What's interfered with my sleep? It may not be Hartman grid. It may not be geophatic only. It may be some specific frequency that interferes with your sleep only. Not your husband, not your wife's. Your sleep only. So you locate that zone, or two or three, whatever it happens to be, block it, and bingo, off to la la land. Is that what you mean by the personal zone? I mean, the thing that affects you only, or? Well, that, sure can be, that can be included in it. These are very general titles. Uh, you can get real specific, ask specific questions. And all of these are from the west or the south? No matter whether it's communication, cash flow, whatever, all of these originate? They can be from any direction, at any angle. Which ones specific then are from the west or the Hardman. south? Hardman. Just, Just the Hartman. Hartman. Hartman grid only is from the west or the south. And do they have any idea what is causing the Hartman lines? No. But you do have an idea what causes the geopathics. At the Hartman lines, you said six and a half to eight feet wide. Is that consistent across the planet? Inches. Inches. Yeah. Inches. Uh, oh, inches. The oh. center line spacing. The difference. center line spacing oh, okay. is about six and a half by eight feet. Oh. Oh. This is spacing the center line. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And then so if you find one that's somewhere within eight feet, there'll be another one. Yeah, probably. Now, in any natural system, this is a natural system, you'll find variations. You know, the exception proves the rule, so to speak. Uh, just like no two tree leaves have exactly the same measurements. With it within a genera of trees, several species, you'll find a variation in the pattern. Okay. This is also true of the Hartman grid. And I found the Hartman grid as close together as two feet in both dimensions, and as far apart as 40 yards. So there, there can be very. Have you ever had the opportunity to uh, to examine what we might call a sacred site in Egypt? Yes. And what was, was the absence of? Uh, we found, uh, like Blanche Mers described in her book, we found the uh, apartment grid bunched at the entrances. Uh, outside the temples, there were seven or eight of them real close together, but absent within the structure itself. Mm -hmm. uh, hence, sacred sites. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, a couple of temples have them specifically located in certain areas, and they're bunched together within the temple. And these are in the, the passages from one room to another. The pyramid will not give you your knees. Have you done any tests in the pyramids with this? No, I didn't go in the pyramid when I was there. And we checked outside, checked for geopathic zones. Didn't mm -hmm. find any geopathic zones you know, in the immediate vicinity. So in your estimation, <coughs> those people have known a lot more than we do now. Absolutely. In as much as the guys that get the pyramids, etc., uh, probably established the grid. They probably established it on purpose. Mm -hmm. So they gridlocked the planet. And what we're doing is yeah, unlocking the Yeah, as I mentioned yesterday, we, 
would even consider the old uh, Lucifer concept yeah. or casting that on the whole person. Mm -hmm. This could very well be that map. It's talking to you. Yeah, it's it's talking to you. With folks. So, so each time we go at a center point and break that, it does change the whole right. Well, all we can really do is face. it would be like you know putting uh, put a basketball under the rug uh -huh. and just lifting. It. It just lifting that red logo, but it does have an effect. I mean, as you do more and more homes in the area. So, with this energy flow it flows this way and this way, anything that would be at that intersection could continue on in that flow, right? I mean, since it's a flow, it's not a static, it's still in the like flow. So you could program, you know, I'm just thinking of other ways that could be used. Here, I'm, it's just a yeah, well, let, let's, let's just questions. lift grid and um, get our minds clear. And then work with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. The, old, awesome. the old Mox and Telegraph, our mm -hmm. Indian communication system, the old shaman would get on some of these major grid lines. And they, they knew the points, they knew the intersections. Well, it's about sun up, I think I'd go over here and sit on this spot. And his counterpart in the next camp, uh, 50, 100 miles away, would go sit on the other end of the telephone. <laughs> these lines are communication lines. That's what I was thinking. You can transmit information on them very easily, especially on the telepathic com line. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Now, if you want to make sure you're on a ley line, not on a geopathic line. Can you teach us that in distinguishing time? Yeah. The, the ley lines are positive. They're mm -hmm. few and far between. They're not very common. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's more laid out on the uh, world grid pattern. Uh, depending on just how close you are to the intersection, how far apart you are, you're in the triangular grid, you're not a rectangular grid. Mm -hmm. Play lines are in a triangle. Oh, okay. So, depending on where you are, the distance apart between them. Well, it's about a home to me. If we find these systematically, like your grid there, and we have to block mm -hmm. these lines, in the south and the west, I can say. Um, now, as we go through our homes and find the different places that we are at constantly, then we must change our place to eat, places. No? Uh, we get after it's blocked, it's, it's okay? Yeah. Oh, all right. Okay, it's, it's, my question will follow hers is what is the height and the depth of the room? You can figure a couple of hundred feet minimum. So if you're doing or several a, hundred feet minimum, if the stronger the zones, home. the the better the effect. This Great. is the basketball under the rug, Slim. Is this what we're talking about? There's two hundred feet right. high? Yeah. Oh, I got two, it. four, six, eight. Yeah. So if you're doing a tall building, how many would you We do? have successfully worked uh, from ground level on the thirtieth floor. So how do you distinguish between the admin lines and the geopathic lines? How, how can you identify? You just what? ask for. You just say, I want the hardened lines. Okay. And you'll find the hardened lines. If you want geopathics, uh, you'll find geopathics, personal communications. Uh, your own mind is like tuning a radio. You've got a whole range of so-called bandwidths of uh, radio stations or television stations. And you can find those interference patterns. Is it, is it necessary to always have a material object to block the line? In other words, is it not possible to mentally block the line? Uh, there are some who claim they can do that. Uh, I've not seen you know, solid evidence of that. Uh, and the reason I say that is that these lines are extremely energetic. They're placed there by some physical means. 
it's, it's not a, a etheric machine, in other words, or mm -hmm. an etheric device that, that places or generates that energy. Uh, these are actual physical structures or machines that generate these lines as far as you can tell. And I can use the earth itself as an illustration of a machine. It's a generator for electromagnetic forces and gravitic forces. And what forces? Gravitic and gravity gravity. forces. So it's, it's actually a machine. We have movement, we have uh, electrical flows, we have energy flows generated by the motion of the Earth. So we can look at that as a machine. Can you also look at these uh, harmonizers as a machine? Yes, they are a machine. So you could have something setting up somewhere as a machine that's generating these grids, right? Yeah, this house is a machine. It generates a certain energy field in and of the nature of the materials, the nature of the structure, uh, the design, the pattern, the angles, the height, the width. It's a machine in a real sense. So, do you feel like there's some what, malefic force or energy that if we can accept the concept this? of a Luciferian off the planet somewhere. Yeah, not different than our radio stations, not different than our television stations, not different than the global network of uh, communication systems, not different than our communication satellites. Something like that. Could very well be generating that. If we can accept this concept of old Lucifer, the devil, Satan, whatever you want to call it, said I will cast a net on the world. That's a willful, malevolent action. And I'm, I'm not going to be in the religion, I mean, religion of science. Right. The better a scientist you are, the more you know about religion. So that's, that's what I want to work on. So anyway, the geopathics uh, <coughs> can be a crack in the rock or a fissure in the soil. And they have a specific direction. Uh, they'll flow from this way or they'll flow at an angle. And they flow in opposite directions to the first one you find them. And you'll find them even side by side. Uh, one flowing in one direction, one flowing back the other way. Mm -hmm. But you only block the one going that way, and you go over here and block the one going back. So they're always in pairs? Not always. They can be. And as you map out uh, a piece of ground, you may see that. You'll, you'll see a slight offset on the compass, you know, from the compass line. You may see a slight offset. And we can, and hopefully we can pull some tape on that. I forgot to bring my surveyor's tape. Maybe and, and, and Slim, in the, in the blocking process, am I understanding this correctly? First you block from the, from the south and from the west. Right. On and the that takes care of the Hartman. And takes care of some of the geopathic, oh. but then you also oh. need. Oh. Only heart. First you go through and block. First you block the heart. You're only tuning into the heart. Then you go back around, reset your radio dial, and mm -hmm. look for the geopathic zones. Go all the way around and block them. Four sides, four compass directions. Four directions. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Then. Once you have that done, oh, let's let's go to. Let's say we've got uh, <coughs> superimposition. We've got one grid superimposed on the other. We always have arguments at the dining table. Mm. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> what a mess! Pity <laughs> the poor guy 
The gal sleeping in this bed. Two geopathic zones crossing right at the waistline or the crotch. No interest in sex. Oh, duh. Gee, he's frigid. He's impotent. Oh, yeah? Knock the zones out and watch what happens. Yeah. <laughs> High level of interest there. Yeah. <laughs> There's the food being prepared here in the kitchen. Crossing the stove. The stuff picks up the energy from these zones. Yeah. I don't care how much love you put into it. That's going to affect the food. Or your storage area. Maybe you store your food where the stuff runs through. Uh, where your car is parked, you've got geopathic crossing the area here by the battery. The battery zone is going bad. She whips, block the zones, you never have a problem again. We've seen it in at least a hundred cases. Oh my God. We've seen it in at least a hundred cases. Uh, or park your car in another area. The battery won't go dead. We've had one instance where there was a transformer right about here that really amped up all of these zones. And they were very, very close together. The gal had her car in one year. She got it repainted three times. Wow. Whoa. She had the complete electrical system torn out and replaced three times. <coughs> this was a brand new Cadillac. Ooh. The Cadillac finally said, I don't know what you're doing. Don't ever come back. <laughs> All in warranty, right? Yeah. The uh, salesman thought she was a jinx. Yeah. And the service people were just beside themselves trying to figure out what the problem was. Why do you think you have your car as a lemon? <laughs> yeah. 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 Probably nothing wrong with the car the way it was built. It was just where she parked it. Mm. Uh, we, we finally, uh, of course, we did knock out the geopathic. We put a ring around the pole <coughs> under the transformer and uh, had a, took a piece of stiff copper bar and she jams that up against the frame every night when she parked it. So she grounded it. Up. And she hasn't had any more problems. Mm -hmm. Paint holes on. No yeah, more like that. Yeah. What's the personal zone? Right, the, the personal zones. The way we discovered this, we'd taken the geopathics and the Hartman out of the home, completely eliminated. This was about, well, I guess, six months, eight months into our cycle when we started this doing this as a business full time. And one of our first clients was a Jinshin practitioner, very, very good healer. I've been at it for 20 years. But she'd been sick with this quote, environmental illness. And she couldn't go in Safeway or couldn't drive a car because she just got too affected in her nerves. So she did a lot, a lot better after we knocked out the geopathics in the heart. She really made significant improvements. So as we kept in touch with her, you know, maintaining the contact to follow the progress, uh, she kept complaining, well, I, I'm not doing as good as I think I should be doing. Husband's okay, the kids are okay, everything's fine. But she just wasn't doing very well. <coughs> okay, well, we'll come back. Maybe we missed something. And, you know, we always allow that you can miss one. Uh, I mean, don't get too cocksure about this. And uh, Bill and I, I mean, we drilled each other until we <laughs> had absolute certainty. Even today, I, I'll go back through and check one more time if I've missed anything. Anyway, I went up there, 
couldn't find the heart in the grave, no geopathics. And the place was clean as a whistle. And she said, well, yeah, but it's coming right through my bedroom window at this angle. No heart in the grave, no geopathics. And I couldn't find it. And I said, here, you take the rod. You, you find it. <coughs> Show me where it is. Well, she did. Well, the rod opened just where she said it was. What am I missing? It's not hard, it's not too hard. Well, maybe it's just something that affects her. So I got her vibration, put my hand on her shoulder, got the vibration, took the rods, and go. So that's why we call it a personal zone. It just affects her personally. Very individual, very distinct. such as, uh, I, my house is full of uh, medical magnets and some really strong ones. Or stuff like any kind of machine that generates a negative ion generator or right generator yeah. or something like that. I, I have been told by a number of dowsers, and if you read the dowsing literature, <coughs> uh, whoever's writing the book will say you can't douse after sunset, you can't douse at night, uh, you can't douse when there's a cloud cover, you can't douse in the vicinity of a radio tower, you can't douse if you've got a magnet in your pocket or a pocket knife or steel or any coins. If you have any metal on your body, you can't douse. If you're wearing rubber sole shoes, you can't douse. Bullshit. Thank you. <laughs> talk about all the, the shibboleths, all the things they can't do. <laughs> well, I'm kind of a rebel. <laughs> uh, I don't believe that because I've always worn rubber soled shoes and had a big belt buckle and a pocket knife and some change. <laughs> so to prove it, put a five pound magnet in my back pocket <laughs> and went out and doubt. No problem. It to make it a little easier, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I took a five-pound bar of silver and put it in my back pocket and went out there and found exactly what I was looking for. No problem. Uh, you can only use a uh, perfectly cut uh, natural crystal pendulum. Nonsense. You can use anything. Anything. Mm -hmm. I won't go into the scatology of that, but you can even use that. Well, that's <laughs> on the end of the <laughs> Slim? So, when you're walking around, do you necessarily have to walk around for a financial, personal, whatever, or can yeah. you just shotgun it and say, any and all harmful zones? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you really can do that. There's well, here again, it's not something to be a shibboleth. I just find it much easier. It's a nicer, cleaner job for me to do each one individually. Pinpoint issues. 
Yeah. <coughs> yeah. If, if you're focusing on you know, any item, then you can clean those up in succession. Yeah, you, you can go ahead and, and shot them if you want to. But you're, you're going to get a little surprised at how frequent the lines come up. And like I was discussing yesterday, if mechanically you had between two layers of tape or whatever, just a bunch of horseshoe shapes and just nail it on a wall. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Just no matter what they are, they'll just be blocked. But isn't it true that if you, because I remember asking, well, why don't we just put rods all the way around our house? Mm -hmm. And that if you have a complete circuit, that that would be harmful. If you just put, like if you just lay well, rods it, all the way around. Waste, waste of wire and time, as far as I'm <laughs> Nice, clean, easy job, simple, cheap, minimum material. Yeah, I know there would be pros and cons to it, but let's say a ley line shifted or whatever. Oh, well. Or he wasn't a really good dowser. You know, all of the... Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to be a good dowser by the end of the day. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't have to wait for the uh, master. You know, you, in, you know, in two, three days, you'll be a master dowser. Don't worry about it. So what's the average blocker that an average home would need to block all three of those legs of lines all far? How much work? What's the average number of blocks that you've got, the little X blocks that you would have to use for your home to block those three negative lines? There's <coughs> no average. If, if I had to give a number, uh, this property will probably take uh, 10 pounds of rod, 10 pounds of each, thousand rods, bundle that big. Mm -hmm. And I'm expecting this to be average, no, but I don't insist that it be average. It, it'll be what it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And I, see, I, in other words, the berry that you will bury up in the ground, or yeah, whatever. It, it, it varies on the size, or how far outside the perimeter you go. Uh, you know, if you come right up close to the house, that minimizes the amount of rods. You one more question. So we have a house and you have a garden. Um, when you do this work, do should we do it from inside of the house or should we do it from the outside of the open pride? Get out get out to the perimeter of the property. Okay. Uh, you know, presuming it isn't too <coughs> many acres, just uh, outside your most common use area. But in any case Particularly uh, when you're dealing with a, a critical condition, uh, do it as quick as you can for the person. Go right in. Uh, don't worry about the yard and the uh, trees and all that stuff. Well, that can be a concern. Do that at your leisure. Or train them and let them do it at their leisure. But go in and get the job done and get on to the next. I just want to clarify, you say that there is no harmful effect to simply running like a copper rod continuously all the way around the perimeter of the house? Probably not. No harmful effect that I would know of, but I'd be tired of this. <laughs> well, you just to lay it, just on the ground. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what we have found is where there are for instance, the, the metal edging they use in flower beds, for some reason that doesn't block the zones. I can't explain that. The metal fences don't block the zones. I can't explain that. But these little rods do block it, and I can't explain that. Because they are copper versus... They're just a light copper wash on them. They're just a very thin coating. They're steel rods. You can use pure copper, they'll last longer. <coughs> these, these rods will last probably you know, seven to ten years in this climate. So theoretically, could you bury just a copper wire, a straight wire, versus I having the rod idea. shape? Yeah, you, you can. Yeah, just a short length of uh, wire. You can just place a wire down there. Yeah. 
versus doing the little crossing of the L bars. Yeah, that, that doesn't work. The Hartman line and the uh, geopathic line, do they, do they skew or do they go on a perfect plumb line? Uh, I have not found them to skew. They may. Uh, if, if I block them on an upper floor level, I block them at the point that I find right there where the rods are pointing. So I'm not worried if it's coming up at an angle. Now, I've heard reports, uh, I've seen diagrams and write-ups on this, that they, they do have an angular, angular factor to it. If you locate them on the floor level where you are, that's a little no importance. It's where you find them on the ground, that's, that's okay. important. And <coughs> the clairvoyance that we've worked with indicate that you know, they're just a, a vertical So basically, where this, say, for, for instance, the personal zone, um, one's personal zone could be upstairs. Will the base always be at the ground floor? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And this this etheric energy cuts right through all all materials. That we yeah. So it's not necessary to go upstairs and go to the and put everything. No. There. Once once you've done it outside, the whole place. Is so uh, you would need about 16 blocks on a ballpark figure to block off that picture right there. You got 16 negative lights. That's what I was asking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's like an average home there. Uh, no, this this is just mm -hmm. for illustration mm -hmm. purposes. Yeah. Would that be excessive or minimal? This would be a very minimal. minimal yeah. this, so, this would be a very minimal. So you would just get, but actually, if you went and put, you know, block it on like the south and the west side, you wouldn't have to worry about the crossings through there because it's blocked, right? Yeah. Okay. So 10 pounds of water would be how many blocks could you make from 10 pounds of water? I don't know. 50? Which is the okay? The, are these these are oh, fenced oh, I see. then? Oh, I see. Okay. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I I, I I go on such a broad scale of things that uh, the only time I get real critical is on locating that zone and making sure I've got you know a couple of good bundles of rod with me when I'm out the field. Uh, we buy this rod instantly in 50 pound bu boxes, and that seems like an awful lot. I mean, see, the way it's got to carry all that stuff. But after you've done about three or four homes, and you see how fast that rod disappears, uh, you realize that uh, even if anywhere from the rod will cost you anywhere from fifty to a hundred dollars for fifty pounds, depending on where you buy it. The average sixty to seventy. But that's still the cheapest, fastest way to get the job done. I mean, per per unit, per stick of wire, uh, that's really cheap. Don't buy it stick by stick in the hardware store. It's about anywhere from 16 to 20 cents per rod. It's ridiculous. So the way you have this with the, with, okay, with the bend in it. <laughs> now what is it actually that blocks the energy, the geopathic zones or the heart zones? Is it the, the straight thing? Is it the, the bend? Is it the angle? Uh, can you? You can, you can just, you can just take a straight piece of rod. Uh -huh. Put it down across that zone, it'll block. Oh, just the straight piece of rod. Okay. That's what I was saying. Why would one go to the pro um, trouble of 
building a, an omega coil then if just the straight would do it? Or does the omega do a little bit more efficient? That seems to work better. I, I can't explain why. <coughs> Working better as opposed to the lines that got on the outside or just inside them? It doesn't, it doesn't matter, matter where you put the omega coil. It doesn't matter where you put the rod. Yeah. It's just my personal preference to work in the dirt outside. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's less disruption mm -hmm. in the house. You don't have these loose pieces scattered around or have to tape to the wall. Mm -hmm. Get them in the ground, get them out of sight. Yeah. So it's just that simple. Well, let's take a little break. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it seems to be here. If you're in strange territory, you can't find north. And I get that way when I'm away from the mountains. I don't orient myself too well. I got to wait till it's dark and then check Pole Star and see which way north is. But a compass is, is pretty handy for you know, checking on your orientation for the uh, part of the grid. You just go over on the south side and the north side or the west side of the house. So I've been in the habit of carrying that and uh, keep it in my yeah, I use a briefcase, old beat up briefcase for folding tools and the rod and a few uh, omega coils. Uh, I find a brick hammer is really handy. Uh, sometimes you have to dig a channel in hard ground, or sometimes you have to drive the uh, spike in so that you can get the rods in a little easier. Sometimes you just need to loosen the ground. And this is a real handy tool for that. They're about anywhere from 10 to 15 bucks. Uh, at any good hardware store, supply house, uh, contractor supply, second hand store, sometimes you find them. So that's number one tool. Then for uh, getting into real tight spots, uh, mechanics, uh, I call it a, either a lady finger or a taper pin. It's tapered from small to large, and the hook helps you pull it out if it gets a bit stuck. And if you're driving into hard ground or into uh, crack and asphalt, uh, they can get a little bit tight. So that helps you get them loose. And then the taper, you just whack it from side to side with the hammer a few times and it'll spring and loosen up. So that, that makes a real handy tool. Where do you get that? Uh, automotive, uh, supply houses, oh, okay. uh, mechanic shops, uh, hardware stores, taper, T A P E R. Then a pair of uh, good quality uh, aircraft tin snips. They're a, a multiplying, what you call a compound pliers. And uh, uh, real short blades on them. And you can shear uh, both the copper wire for the Omegas and you can shear the bundle of the uh, welding rod. It comes in a 36 inch length, about so long. You just cut it in half and you can take a, a several, just fill the jaws and either use your leg you know, to push against or uh, get down on the ground and you shove against the floor and put your whole weight on that top handle. And you can shear uh, a bundle that'll wind up about that big in you know, a couple of three minutes. It's really fast. But you have to be able to put your weight on it uh, to get that shearing handle. <coughs> so 
rods themselves are the choice is a 332nd gas, mild steel, mild steel rod, well rod. Okay, they're, they're stiff enough that you can shove them in the ground at an angle uh, into most soils. If it's too stiff and it's bands and there's a lot of rocks and all that, then go to your uh, claw and uh, brick hammer and dig a little trench loosen it up. You only have to get them into the ground maybe an inch. Get some out of the way of the uh, lawn mowing and raking and all of your yard tending activities. So they're very unobtrusive, you'll never see them again, but they're there doing the job. And it's quite a, a simple operation. Uh, when we're done here this afternoon, uh, we'll have something that looks like this. We'll have three different colors or flavors of these zones that have been diverted up and over. <coughs> They're blocked where the red marks are here and it goes up and over. So you're literally in a bubble uh, that extends about the yard over the house and uh, you're, you're free of that geopathic stress from that point on. So this is what it would look like if you could view it in color like the clairvoyants do. So that finishes the uh, technical and formal presentation on geopathic stress. Now we're going to go out in the field, get a set of rods in our hands, locate them, and have fun. Okay. One last concept that is important, and it's something that we've discovered uh, both by rumor and by direct observation. If we let the red grid represent in, in the most general terms the uh, Hartman angiopathic zone grid, there is another factor. <coughs> And let's say that we're just catching every hundredth one, here, something like that, or maybe two hundred. So this this map would cover maybe two square miles. What we found is that in some neighborhoods, and they're very ill-defined, but in some areas, uh, like the green area, would be an area where uh, there's a high number of strokes. The blue area would be an area where there's a high number of heart attacks or cancer or other ailment. But that would be the most common disease in that uh, square mile area. So neighborhoods or areas or districts will have a different influence. And that influence is riding on the grid lines, all of them in that area. Okay, I can't explain that. I don't know why it is. So it's just merely an observation. Uh, for instance, there's an, an area <coughs> north of Golden, about you know, five miles east of the mountains, that <coughs> the children, uh, a high percentage of the children born in that area, have a, I don't know the name of the condition, but the sutures don't open, don't grow in the, in the skull case. Mm -hmm. 
So they go in and they do operation after operation after operation. And uh, whatever it is, those sutures are permanently knit. They, they don't grow. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, an area probably or a mile radius. But all of them in that district, all, a majority of kids in that district have that same syndrome. Now it occurs occasionally in other parts of Denver, but this area became known for that. And so a lot of young couples uh, sold their homes, you know, they were planning to have more kids. And they sold their homes, sold to older couples. <coughs> And so the, you know, there's quite a population shift there. And I think there'd been three kids or four <coughs> kids born in the area, and then all of a sudden there was an exodus from that area. Very proper kind of thing to do. Yeah. And uh, we haven't yet found out if there's, you know, some factor that affects older folks uh, that, that are not childbearing. But just be aware that there's heart attack neighborhoods, stroke neighborhoods, diabetes neighborhoods, uh, cancer neighborhoods. And it can be you know, a very small area, maybe a five or ten block area, or it can be you know, a square mile or more. Now, <clears throat> without making an adequate survey, uh, we could postulate that uh, over here, there's a, in this area, there's a substation, electrical substation. Uh, I don't like electrical power stuff anyway, and the substations are very suspect. Uh, you could also have a situation like a, a factory over in here that used a lot of electric power or was producing uh, some product that involved a chemical. Now, if these lines go through a chemical storage area, they'll pick up the vibration of that chemical and transmit it along the lines. Wow. Okay, it's, it's like Mox and Telegraph again. So this chemical substance is not present. There's not a molecule of it outside of the barrel it's sitting in. But the frequency pattern is carried by the geopathic zone. Uh, we, we did a miniature study on that. We had a, uh, a little storefront uh, series of businesses. And you know, here's a major intersection in Denver. And then all these little storefronts in this building. Typical kind of a setup. You know, there's a McDonald's up here and a uh, H&R Block here, and there's a nail parlor here and a, uh, some kind of a service wrap in here. Down at this end, we had a chiropractor. Well, people would walk into the door and they were sensitive to chemicals. Or they have allergies, and they walk in the door and they start sneezing and complaining about odors, chemical odors, so on and so on. And she called us and said, well, you know, come help. So we went in, we located all the geopathic zones on this side and then realized that the nail parlor in this area had the chemical smell she was dealing with. So there were two zones going through this area. And mind you, they're 100 feet apart no possibility of any <coughs> molecular substance being in this chiropractor space. So after we blocked the zones here, diverted that energy, she didn't have any more complaints. Zero. Because the same people who've been complaining time after time had no more complaints. We found in some locations uh, a very <coughs> strong, well, I think in one location in particular, a uh, very large home or a multi, you know, these big. And uh, there was a zone ran through his bedroom 
and out through the kitchen, bedroom back in here, uh, kitchen and entrance out here. And if you walk into this area, uh, instantly you smell this very strong uh, tropical plant over it. I recognized it as being a tropical plant, a poisonous plant. And he was not in good health and so on and so on and so on and we couldn't keep any kitchen help they all bailed out and so when we blocked the zone out here by the street we came up to it and it almost knocked me down you know, you're focused you're open and the rods open that stepped into it and bang it was just like i absorbed the full dose of this poison and my wife was right beside me and she went to her knees and it knocked her down. So as soon as we blocked the zone, uh, we got out of the area and kind of shrugged off and got rid of the energy. And uh, after we finished the job a couple hours later, uh, we came back around and there was no odor here. The odor up here was extremely strong outside the block spot. And as time went on, uh, the man recovered his health a bit, he, you know, changed his behavior, wasn't as toxic. And uh, his girlfriend was delighted. So by blocking that, we probably saved him an early death, even though he didn't spend much time there. And that was a, a wild experience for us, and we, we were really blown away by it. Uh, Christiane asked me to demonstrate one more thing that we do after every job, every time you go out and do one of these jobs. You need to drain off that negative energy. A process we call switching. It's out of a kinesiological process, and it will help you in a lot of different ways. But we absorbed that energy standing around in it, being uh, exposed to it, down on our knees, hammering our rods in. And the way to eliminate it out of your system, rebalance, you use the pressure points right under the collarbone. There's two points right beneath the collarbone, right kind of little hollow spots in there. And they may be sore. Uh, that's the kidney meridian the so-called K27s or by any other name. So these two spots, you can reach them with one, one hand, that is, get right in under those collarbones and you know, dig around and you find a, a hollow. Place the other hand on the navel and just massage that gently for about a minute and a half. So is that why I felt tired? Yeah. Kind of wasted. Yeah. Yeah, you feel kind of wasted. Yeah. All right. Uh, that'll happen, you know, in the ordinary course of the day. If you happen to be sitting in one or sleeping in one, mm -hmm. uh, this little exercise can be done standing up, sitting down, laying in bed. If you can't sleep at night, it's a wonderful way to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just right These, well, they're all right getting the whiskers out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. It's about uh, four inches apart. That's right. Okay. Right under the collarbone. Yeah. You got it. That's what he said. Okay, that's the spot. So you don't have to do like the different people. Not necessarily. <laughs> So massage there. It's not okay. necessary to press hard. Hmm? It's not necessary to press hard. Moderately hard. Moderately. Yeah. A little pressure. The next point is above and below, the, right on the gum line. You press in towards the gums and fairly stiffly. You really need to press but on the outside hard. of your lip. Yeah. But, but press against the gum line. In a short a uh, minute or two of massage there.
Okay, the last point is right at the end of the tailbone. Hand on the navel. Reach her in the heart. I love this. One. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody laughs. <laughs> right, right on the end of the tailbone. It's really a lot of fun to stand out in the street. <laughs> <laughs> you can go back in the bushes. It's okay. <laughs> you probably start feeling the sensations now of the tingling in the legs. That's the energy draining off, going down the ground. So, so. Left hand, right hand Either. of the navel? Doesn't matter. Mix and match. Are all three for the kidneys? Hmm? All three for the kidneys here, here. No. This, these are just points to press. Yeah, these are release points. Helps you balance forward, back, <coughs> side to side, and then center. That, that's something we found out uh, after, oh, we go up do four or five jobs a day and come home and just be beat, absolutely ready for collapse. And if we learn this technique, uh, we could do seven, eight, ten jobs a day and come home and go dancing. So mm -hmm. So it's a good technique. Anytime you feel tired or plugged up or you know not quite yourself, it's a simple technique to rebalance. Get the energy flowing and rebound. So, any questions? Mm -hmm. um, the chemical principle you just showed. Right. Uh, that doesn't paint a pretty picture for a nuclear power plant in uh, waste areas. Uh, no, it doesn't. Can something be done like about Hanford and nuclear mm. stations? Uh, well, you, you couldn't can, do it on their property, obviously, but you could go outside you can the go perimeter. Out and bar a ditch on the road. Right. Yeah. Now, and that would keep the power from transmitting radioactive well, frequencies? Well, keep that, but that particular vibration off the grid, <laughs> yeah. And there won't be too many lines in that area. So once it, once it came down and you you blocked it and sent it back up, the next place it comes down, that it's not going to be in it? No, it'll, it'll be there. So it will. But, so mm -hmm. that's why you, that's one of the good reasons to do your house, just, you know, just in case there's something upstream. Let's say your neighbor has, a, or even you have, a household chemicals, a paint thinner, roach killer, you know, whatever out in the garage. If there's a zone going through it and running through your bed, you're, you're picking up that, that pattern. Uh, so you just block the zone that doesn't go through. Okay. What, what, when you massage the tailbone at the end, what does that do? That's kind of a, another release point. It, it releases that energy to fall out. Generally, you, you feel that tingling in your legs. And, uh, my feet are hot right now. Just, mm -hmm. yeah. Suddenly they got real hot. 